Hello everyone, in this video I'll show you what you can do in the beginning so you are set with food and water and have the best insulation possible. I'm a new daisy player but I think I got the basics, ok? I survive the early game all the time, this doesn't take into account PvP by the way. So this is aimed to the new players but I think even some of the older daisy players new to this map might learn a thing or two. If you do, hit that subscribe button to help me bring you good game reviews and useful videos like this one. Before we start inside the game, let's chat a bit looking at this map for a minute. I will link it in the description of the video by the way. The green area is tier 1 loot and the area you'll spawn on this map. I like spawning in the north northwest, spawning to the east sucks for multiple reasons. But the main reason is the loot. You'll have less military gear spawns on that side of the map and you need to circle the entire island to reach the west which has tier 3 loot. But take into account I never tried to go south and then west, I always went to the north towns and villages towards the west, never south. That blue part is tier to loot, so no idea it might be better, but looking at the map the roads are more confusing and you'll find some towns inland, far away off the coast, while the northern part of the island is just village after village after town and so on. So you can just follow it nicely. One reason to go south if you can is to search for a boat, stock up on some food and water and go straight to the island down south as you'll get tier 4 loot there. So yeah, the, this might be a, the meta, I don't know. We'll try South Route 2 at some point and if I find it good I'll make an additional video about it. Always hit the police cars if you see them as they have valuable loot most of the time but pull those guys off one by one so you don't bleed from the start, ok? <laughs> and oops, I forgot to check the trunk of the car that's in the front. Oh well, anyway the first thing you should do is to get warm. What I like to do first though is to find some food and water if I can of some zombies or one two houses. If I can't find any I'll just make the fire. But usually I manage to find something, at least. I don't like doing torches unless I absolutely need to. And to be honest, at the start you, you can just risk it and make a fire in the house. Who cares if you die, right? So you get a proper double plus on your temperature indicator. That will last you for a while. If someone is ganking you, you lost what? 5-10 minutes? Who cares, bro? Just rinse and repeat. Uh, cover up the best you can so you prolong the effects of the fire. Shovels are useful to fight off the zombies early on and you can also dig worms with them, so it's a win-win if you ask me. Duct tape is great for patching up clothing, so you'll have the best insulation possible with your clothing, so always pick it up early. Make rags out of clothing articles, you don't need, with two stacks of six you can make a rope that's useful for fishing, even if you are not into fishing you can still use it to make fires, gloves and a face cover, among other things. Those are mandatory by the way, they help a bunch, gloves and face cover at least, you'll find the rest pretty easy. The bad thing is, they got damaged pretty quick, so yeah, you need to redo them from time to time. Now let's do a fire. Get a few short sticks and place them into a fireplace. You, you go cut some tree bark from the outside tree. With a short stick and a tree bark you can make a hand drill kit. You'll skip this step if you found matches or you have a lighter. Place a rag in the kindling category of the fireplace. Equip the hand drill kit and ignite the fire. It's pretty straightforward and intuitive. Frozen vegetables will defrost fast if you keep them into your pockets, but if you make a fire you might just put them on the smoking or cooking slots to accelerate the process. Most food contains varying degrees of water and that's pretty good, you'll, so that means you hydrate while you eat. Well, I wanted to leave but I found this frozen soda, so I'll go back to the fire to heat that can a bit. And there you go, let's have it. We'll treat myself with some Nuta Cola. <laughs> Not a cola before departing. Nice, a cleaver. This will come in handy after I ruin my steak knife. And I think I'll do that fast because of the amount of rags I make. Time to make that rope now so I can go fishing because the food meter is still on yellow. I decided against taking the BK18 because that takes a back slot and early on I value more, I don't know, the shovel and the improvised fishing rig. I'll make in a bit. You can disassemble the rig after you are done fishing, but yeah, that's extra weight for just one bullet. It makes no sense, to me at least. Even the zombies get stunned when they see how I hold the shovel. <laughs> 
I hate when I get bleeding the first time one of them touches me. Yeah, look, uh, Sporter22, my Daisy Guru friend told me this is one of the worst weapons in the game. And yeah, finally time to go fishing, let's do this. Just need a long stick and combine that with the rope we made earlier. Need to get some worms, any knife will do. Or a sickle, or a shovel, anything, any sharp object. I think even a bayonet will work. There are plenty of tools that can dig worms out of the frozen ground. But wait, goddammit, I have a shovel. <laughs> so in one cycle this got me three earthworms, right? If you use your knife, you'll get only one in the same time. Then you need a wood hook from a short stick if you didn't find any other hook by now. I'm blind and I forgot I got one already. Then I keep the hook and the earthworm and you're set. Fishing is easy, just left click and hold it. You need to hold it until uh, there is a splash of water in front of you. That's the moment you let go of that mouse button, not before. You can also look left and right while fishing, but you are pretty much a sitting duck there anyway. This is the only time I am fishing though, so again, if I die, I don't care. Any day now. There's the splash. Oh, th there's a pretty battered steelhead trout. You know what? I think this will do. I tend to cook too much food anyway. This time I keep it simple. I'm making some room now. I know the meat will take up two times three by one slots. Now it's time to gut the fish. I'm so sorry, bro. You die so I can live. With no gloves, you need to wash your hands of blood after you gut an animal. Or you'll get infected with salmonella. Mm. So don't eat anything before you wash your hands, it's very important. And yeah, you can easily do that on the coast, but even in land you can wash your hands in the snow on this map, so you have no excuse really. Yeah, it's time to make another fire and cook all the meat. This will last you for a long time. So yeah, I couldn't help myself and got one more fish, and I found a pate in the meantime. Cooked meat has more calories than the smoked meat, by the way. Cooking the meat is better on this map though, because the food doesn't decay due to low temps. But to save time, you will most likely fill up all the slots, because nobody enjoys being a sitting duck, babysitting a fire for too long, am I right? Another good tip is uh, put warm meat in your jacket and pants, not the backpack. This will help you retain heat better for a short while. Fill your belly as you'll soon need the uh, inventory space and it's best if you fill up as much as you can all the time. So I mean, I'm a hobo. <laughs> so the basic navigation uh, on the coast is you go west if the water is on your right and you go east if it's on your left. Most of the time you want to go west anyway. Oh, by the way, this applies to the northern part of the island. On the southern coast, going west will have the ocean to your left. And yeah, get matches or lighters as you find them. Making fires or torches will be faster that way. A pristine jacket with high insulation and five more inventory slots. Yes, please. <laughs> well, I'm not stealing from that kid, okay? He won't need his backpack to go to school anymore. And finally I got some room, now I can find a pistol or something. The rags can be disinfected by alcoholic tincture. You can bandage your wounds with dirty rags but that has a chance of infection. So yeah, if you are early into your life you probably won't make it because the antibiotics are pretty scarce and you won't find many until you reach one of the main towns that have some, some of the yellow tents. I'll show them in a bit. Some items can be stacked. So you can stack pills, matches and of course ammo and rags etc. Potatoes need to be peeled but don't need to be cooked. So yeah, you can just eat them raw. <laughs> the zombies are pretty easy to deal with, they just don't aggro more than two at a time. And ideally you will log only aggro one at a time. Let them have their two attacks while blocking, then hit them once and repeat until they die. Once you figure out their pattern and know your weapon speed, you can just kill them before they can react. Because you'll interrupt their attack if you hit them first. Oh, 
but yeah just take it slow for now and do it by the book in the beginning you don't need to waste those bandages okay Once you hear those calls, you can go hunting. If you're on the coast, it's really easy because the direction of the call is inland, obviously. Just need to get close without spooking the prey and hopefully take a clean shot to the heart or lungs. I know this from hunting games. <laughs> you don't want to hit the head so you don't destroy the trophy or something. Once you believe you got closer, crouch and keep your eyes and ears open. Press control to hold the breath. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> there you go. I think this is my first reindeer kill. I only killed a couple of rabbits and a goat or something. But yeah, I think this is the first one. I'll not get anything good from Santa this Christmas. <laughs> As I killed his reindeer. Yeah, get it? I ate and drank some stuff to make room for all that meat and fat. But remember, if you don't have gloves, wash your hands in the snow after you got the animal or you'll get infected with salmonella, okay? Oh my god, and I got food for days now. I'll drop some of the stuff for sure. And look, the meat will freeze if you keep it outside for too long, but it doesn't matter too much though, as you will need to cook it anyway. I'll make a fire in the woods now, we'll cook a few chunks of meat as my friend taught me, but I'm sure there are better ways to do it. You might need extra cooking equipment I believe and I have none. Just make a fireplace by combining rags with short sticks, then you proceed like with any other fireplace you know. By this point you should have at least matches. To cook outdoors you need a long stick and you need to sharpen it with a knife. You cycle between options with the mouse wheel by the way. And yeah, after that's done, you notice a slot appeared below the stick. Just put a piece of meat on it and go near a fire and you'll figure it out. And then you roast the meat. This process is tedious and slow. I recommend you cook only a few slices of meat and fat that way for now. As I said, the food doesn't really degrade, so it won't go bad. I mean, it might degrade, but it's a slow process and I never saw it happening. With all that done, my next objective. This is very important. Always have an objective. I want to reach the military area in the capital of the island. In hopes for some weapons and gear, of course. So I'll just go past this industrial area because I don't care about it. And I found this police car and I want to see what's inside. And yeah, a balaclava. Nice. Does uh, best insulation and looks cool. Finally got to change my invisible man like mask. <laughs> and in the trunk I found a pistol flashlight. Nice one. Might come in handy pretty soon. And at night, sneak around. No point running like a crazy person as you will be hurt by players and zombies alike. I died multiple times now while aggroing multiple zombies I couldn't fight off. And in these higher tier areas of the map, the zombie density seems a bit higher. Yeah, God sees you if, even if you sneak around though. So no point doing it near churches. <laughs> I'm kidding by the way. I'll show you. A melee fight with two of those guys now. I try to time my attacks between theirs. It's pretty hard and if you have three or four on you, <laughs> good luck. It can still be done of course. Most I killed was three but I've also been killed by two. By only two. So yeah. It depends on how lucky you are with the bleeds. If they don't cut you every other hit you have a chance. My friends showed me this trick. You can run inside the house when they follow you. Then come outside closing the door. Trapping them on the inside. This is pretty cool. And uh, the funny thing is. If a player goes to the house and opens the door without paying attention. Guess what? He'll get uh, his face eaten by zombies. You know you left there. It's pretty neat.
It's nice to hit those military areas at night because you can sneak crouched and I believe the line of sight because you can sneak around easily, you just need to crouch because they can't hear you if you are crouched and I believe the line of sight is worse at night but I'm not sure. Yellow tents usually have all kinds of pills and medical supplies on them while green ones have weapons, ammo and military clothing and supplies obviously. Attachments go into slots below the weapon. This pistol for example has a magazine of course, a silencer and a flashlight. They differ from gun to gun and you probably know more about guns than me so I'll just shut up. And two more things. If you know you'll die and you know where you are, you can start dropping your gear so it doesn't despawn. And if it takes too long, you can equip a weapon, press F11, let the animation finish without moving, then left click. And this is it. Now you should be prepared to hit the tier 3 or 4 islands. Beware, you'll need some ammo for that to defend against wolves and stuff. And of course food and water because resources are scarce on, the, on those. I might do another video about that part of the map. Thank you for watching this video. Like and subscribe if you found anything useful in it. I'll bring you more and more useful videos, reviews and guides on many genres. Until next time, take care and see ya.